What's up, y'all? It's your boy Leon Tukuli, South African Geek. Welcome to my channel. I'm about to do a movie catch up right now. First movie on the chopping block. It's for Fahrenheit 451. Fahrenheit, right? Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, that's what it's called. This was an interesting movie. It had a rocky first act, like for me, because they were using words we know in our dictionary, but using them different. So. It was kind of like you playing catch up with their reality a little bit, which is interesting and mindfuckery makes you like invested in the story, but it was rocky. Like there's some moments where you were interested and some moments like, okay, okay, man, uh, okay. I like really those shots from those computer, 360 computer, like like Jarvis's, <laughs> like AI's, I really liked that, those shots, like the, showing her what they saw, it was really nice to see, they, they started with one in his bathroom, I wonder why his one was in his bathroom, and his was like in his study, like, it was like personality type of tricks, I don't know, like, it was a trippy, I, I would say it had a strong second act for me, when Michael B. Jordan's character was starting to montage, right? Montage, montage, or whatever his name is, started questioning every everything he was fed. When his memory started coming back, the story started being precise and interesting. And when he started to fall for the girl who used to be free, but then chose not to be free, then. Like, it was just such an interesting story from that standpoint. Then it had the weakest third act ever when they started recruiting him. Like, the first day recruiting thing was so stupid. They just need to see if you're willing to kill somebody. Then, boom. Like, that dude was burning motherfuckers alive. Of course, he could burn some motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> and they even did... Like in the second act, they were building to showing that his partner, his captain, beat up his father and burned the books his father had. Like, he was once free. And that kind of justified his choice at the end, but didn't have that, you know, that confrontation I wanted, wanted them to have. Like, you were there. Like, when, what, what, when they did this to my father, like, I expected some type of confrontation and they didn't have it give this movie like a 7 out of 10 it's a good movie but like it doesn't have that lasting effect on you like and it should because of that strong ruled story like story, the story itself seems like it should have so much depth to it but it doesn't the movie at the end it doesn't leave you like oh knowledge is power like it actually makes you think fuck why did that person burn themselves for that book <laughs> What would you? Nah, fam. You know what I'm saying? And you should be there. Like, yo, knowledge is everything. That's the shit that, that fucked me up in this movie that I wasn't convinced most of the time. But it was a good movie. I give it like a 7 out of 10. I would watch it again. But I wouldn't rush to watch it again. Like, since I've gotten the digital HD of Infinity War. Psh, boy, how many times I've watched that shit? <laughs> Okay, the next movie on the chopping block is Pacific Rim 2 Uprising. This is a good movie. Good movie that kind of ruined a lot of the emotional death and the action sequences because of the comedy and the childlike sensibility. Like, they really wanted to make it so PG this time. And it kind of cost it for me. Like, yo. There's so many cool things about it that you could go through the story, like especially when they killed his sister. I was like, whoa, they went there. Then they have a snowball fight at the end of the movie after they won. It's like, yo, probably so many people lost their lives, and here you are, snowball fighting. It's just like moments like that that just kill me. And those strong moments, like that girl building a Jaeger had some powerful moments. It's just that, ah, uh, and the visual effects, like. When they integrated, like when the humans were next to the Jaegers or the, the monsters, it did not seem real. Yeah, it looked shitty. But when it was Jaeger versus... Uh, I forgot what the monsters are called. When they were going ham against each other, 
yo, that was stunning to behold. I mean, like, they went ham on that scene, those scenes. But, like, when it came to the humans and them interacting, like, there's a lot of scenes where you see, like, a foot or whatnot, and the earth is crumbling below them. It just looks so fake. <laughs> you couldn't, like, I couldn't, like, accept it for what it was because it looked so fake for me. But it was a good movie. I give it, like, a seven out of ten. Like, I don't know if I want the franchise to continue. Just the goofiness. I, cause they even went from the snowball fight and they went to another moment where John Boyega's character was like, "We're coming to them." I was like, "Man, I ain't, I can't even take you serious, right?" <laughs> cause you just had a snowball fight after a massive attack. Like, that was such a collateral attack moment. Ah, third movie on the chopping block is Red Sparrow. Jennifer Lawrence. It's a beautiful movie. A beautiful movie because of her mostly. I, I like how. I think this is like legit one of the first movies outside Cadmus because Cadmus was loved. That Jennifer Lawrence was seen as Jennifer Lawrence and how she looked. Because everybody saw how beautiful she was. Like they acknowledged her, like, like for an understandable amount, like why people would use her for this, why they would recruit her for that, why would this dude believe her if she did this, you know what I'm saying? Like they really used her sexuality in this movie, and rightfully so, for the script, I understand why. The ending was trippy. But it wasn't like so riveting. Like I didn't know it was like, oh, she screwed up, uncle. It's kind of like, yeah, get it. Get it, girl. He deserved that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there was a lot of moments. The twist, that dude working with the American, uh, Jamie Irons, his character being the mole, that was a trippy moment. Like the pacing for this movie was iffy for me because there were some moments that were like you know quick paced and there were some moments that were just like slow like they wanted to, you to be in the scene for this moment Fahrenheit also had that same problem where like the pacing for some scenes was like you know what I'm saying they were like establishing the world she lived in she was a ballet dancer her injury her recovery like it happened so fast you know what I'm saying then there were some moments where she was like in the scene, especially in the training moments. I wonder why they didn't train them to kick ass though. Like, that was so weird for me. Like, if they didn't get believed, <laughs> like, wouldn't they need combat training? I was like, yo, they got Natasha Romanoff to get this full on treatment. She got the whole thing. I think they took her out of the training too soon, even. Damn, like, she had a skill that they were like, mm, four months, you good. <laughs> it was a good movie. I gave it like an 8 out of 10. Definitely will really watch it again. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. It didn't like mind boggle me. It didn't like take me to other stratospheres like like how to talk to girls in parties or Infinity Wars or Deadpool 2. Or, I could name so many other movies that fucked me up this year. The Ready Player One. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was a good movie. Give them justice for making a good movie. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, deuces.